Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from thomaswithstyrephotography.com. Today I'm doing a follow-up video on the street photography vlog that I posted the other day. Um, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about my post-production process. So uh, I will start by taking the images and going through the shoot and uh, I will be rating the images. So uh, while I'm doing that, I'm going to talk about why I like some images and uh, kind of things about composition and why certain images work and why certain images don't work. And then once I've done that rating process, what I'm going to do then is I will go through some of the images and I will actually edit them so you can see my post-production process. This is actually a pretty long video. Um, it's about 45 minutes in length in total. However, I think it's worth sticking with it because I actually do talk about a lot of useful information here and uh, you can get to see my kind of workflow process in action. So uh, I hope you'll stick with it to the end. Um, so let's get going. Okay, so here I am in Capture One. Um, what I'm using for this uh, exercise is I'm going to use a session. So uh, if you're not familiar with Capture One, sessions are like little mini projects that you can use for if you're just working on one shoot or something like that. So that's what we're going to use here. So I'm going to start by importing the images. So I'm going to click here on the import button. Um, and because I've done this already, it already has it loaded. Um, so this is the first set of images. This is from the X-Pro2. So I'm going to load all these in. Um, I'm going to apply, a actually I'm not going to apply a style and import. I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm not going to apply anything on import because I've already set up my defaults. Now in this folder I also have some movies that I shot um, on the X-Pro2 as well in this particular shoot and I don't want to bring them in so I'm actually just going to select the ones that I want. So I'm going to select all these and hit import. Okay so that's going to go ahead and start importing. Um, so I will edit this out so you're not sitting here waiting and watching this. Okay, so while the files are importing, I just want to talk about something. Um, the way I have my Capture One set up, uh, you can set defaults for uh, different types of images in Capture One. So because uh, these are coming in off my X-Pro2, I already have some defaults set up for it. Now, I'm using uh, a third-party color profile, uh, which I downloaded, and I actually have a video on how to do this. So if you haven't already done that, you should check that out because it actually makes a big difference. Um, so I have that set up as a default to Provia and also the curve is set to high contrast. Um, I also have my sharpening settings set at a kind of a base level that I like, um, which I kind of go through in my uh, Capture One eBook. So I have all that set up. So once I import the images, they're pretty much set up the way I want them. Um, while this is importing, it's going to generate some previews as well. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with Capture One, this is kind of similar to the way Lightroom works. Um, what you can see here as well is I actually have a second monitor going, so uh, I have all my thumbnails displayed on that, but I'm just recording the main monitor for the moment, and there's nothing that particularly interesting that you need to see on it, so <laughs> there's no point in recording that as well. Okay, so the images are still importing here. Um, so what I'm going to do is, while they're coming in, I'm just going to start going through them. Um, it doesn't really matter that they're still generating the previews. In fact, I can actually close this window. You don't need to see it. Uh, you can always get back to it by clicking on this little button up here. See, So you can see it's still generating the previews. Um, so I can close this activity window. And again, I can start looking through my images. Okay, so that's just a selection. Um, I'll go through them properly in a minute. But first of all, what I want to do is import the rest of the files, which are the files off the GH2. So that was the other camera that I had with me. Um, so I can have everything in together. Now, again, I have default set up for that as well. So it, when I bring them in, um, it will be set up 
the way I want it for that. Uh, so I don't have to do kind of any base level settings. But uh, I'll go through that in a second. But first, let me just bring them in. So in this case, this source is still on the memory card, which I have in the memory card reader. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this up. Okay, and I don't particularly want these first lot of images, so I'm just going to select all the rest of them. And again, destination is going to be session folder. Um, I don't apply any adjustments on import, so I'm just going to hit import. Okay, so this is importing these now as well. And if I look down, again, you can't see it is because it's on the other screen, but you can see that the files are importing. And um, they'll come in pixelated at first because it hasn't generated a preview yet, so you're just kind of getting the quick image. But it doesn't take very long, so we kind of go through them fairly quickly. Um, so again, these are images of my GH2. Um, So I'm going to start at the start once this is finished generating previews and what I will do is I'll go through the images and rate them. So I'm going to give the ones I want uh, want to use a 5 star rating. Um, so I actually like this image because uh, there's some light falling on it um, which you can't really see but you will once I enhance it a bit and also I'm a kind of a sucker for textures so I kind of like that. So. Gonna give that five star. Again, we've got the pattern of light here. You don't really see much, um, but if I enhance that a bit, you they'll probably stand out a bit. Um, one of the things I like about Capture One as well is let me just close that. It's kind of like the way Aperture used to work. You don't. It's not modal like Lightroom, so you don't have to switch between one mode and another. So you can actually jump over here and work on the image um, without having to switch between a library and develop mode. So yeah, I kind of like that. Um, I'm going to do a bit more to that in a minute, but I'm just going to write that for the moment. Okay, so here I talked about this in the video that I shot. Um, you can see there was the light reflecting off the pool. So this is some of the images I shot. And um, this first one I didn't particularly like because you can kind of see the top of this here and I, I wanted to just focus on the wall. So, yeah, I like this one. Um, it, I kind of like it because you've got strong horizontal lines here um, and you've got just basically forming a strong pattern. Again, I can just kind of quickly look at what this might look like tweaked. Yeah, so I like that, we're going to go with that. So we give that five stars as well. Um, okay, this is pretty cool. There's this guy working in the ground. Yeah, we give that five stars. I like this shot too, because again, you've got an interesting abstract going on. So, give that five stars. Okay, so this was the sequence of shots that I talked about. Um, we had this nice situation going on where there was the light in the background uh, and we created this nice contrast between the warm light in the background and the blue in the foreground and then you had people walking in front of it and I was kind of trying to time it right so that just as they hit the middle of it I grabbed the shot so I like that one uh, I like this one as well I like doing these walking shots and, and I find uh, you kind of have to time it just right it's very hard to get it exactly right but I prefer I prefer it when somebody has or is in mid stride like this because it creates a stronger it's a stronger composition at least I think so anyway compared to say this pose which again it kind of works as well but I just prefer this it's just the actual shapes the graphic shapes that it forms I think works quite well so but they're both good images um, and then we have a clean one as well, so I like that as well. I also shot some of the just the building side because again, I like the I love textures. <laughs> you may have noticed. 
we also had the kind of the nice light going on in the background here. So I like that one because it's fairly clean. Again, once I enhance the contrast a bit on this, it'll come up a bit more. You'll see it. I'll maybe drop the exposure down. I'll work on these a bit more in a minute. I'm just kind of going through them quickly. Again, we have nice patterns and textures going on here and there's a nice contrast between the yellow and the concrete so that's kind of why I like those images uh, a couple of versions of this actually, I actually think the first one's the best because it's probably more even okay so this next sequence is uh, I also talked about in the video actually I didn't talk about it because he couldn't hear me <laughs> over the building work <laughs> I wanted to talk about it but I didn't so uh, what I like to do sometimes when shooting street photography is if you see a nice background you can set up a shot uh, and just wait for people to walk into it which is what I was doing here so we had this nice background and yeah so we had some different people going on this kind of works because you've got you've got a sense of uh, you're in the scene and also there's a symmetry going on here between the red car and the guy wearing the red jacket and also because the car is moving you get this whole sense of a dynamic scene and um, I know some people will probably go oh the red car is a distraction but I kind of like it I think it works it works as a counterpoint to this and kind of shows that everything is moving okay and there's another one I was trying to kind of get people to in between these two parts it kind of worked for some shots and then other ones didn't Again, this is a good shot as well because you have a nice bit of contrast going on here, so I'll mark that as a 5 star. Uh, this one didn't work because the car does run it in this shot. Also, it's slightly out of focus. Then we have a clean one. Again, doesn't quite work for me. This shot, I like this because you've, uh, you've got four people going on here. Um, and we can crop this slightly and make it a bit more symmetrical, so we'll mark that. And again, that's not a great shot. Um, yeah, that's okay. That might work as a black and white. I'll mark it for now and see. Okay, so from there I went into this little park that's beside that building site, and I've got some cool sets in here, which I know technically weren't street photography, but anyway. So this was a cool shot. I like that. I'll mark that. Um, these two shots again my fascination with light and texture <laughs> so I'll mark that so this was the waterfall that I was taking pictures at uh, again I like that because we've got this we've got a lovely light going on here you can kind of see it the water is refracting and creating these patterns and yeah it's kind of cool so we'll go with that and um, then there was this shot which also kind of worked because again we've got nice light going on got the bokeh in the background I think it's kind of cool um, I shot a few of these but I actually think the first one's the best okay and next up we have this letterbox shot that I again talked about in the video and I think the second one of these is probably the best okay again if we increase the contrast on this we bring up the patterns of light and shade a bit better so again You've got this nice texture going on uh, on top of this kind of grunge texture of this as well. So as you can see, it's, you've got a lot of detail going on there, so it's pretty cool. I like that shot. Okay, so now we're on to the kind of more streaky stuff. Uh, obligatory shadow shot. Actually, that was a mistake. <laughs> okay, so this is a cool shot. We like that. We like this. Um, again, I talked about this shot in the video too. This is this lovely little red brick house, and we've got the light and going on here with the shadows and everything creates a nice texture. And light. so we like that shot. Um, I did a couple of these just trying to get the angle right. Uh, the first one's probably better. And then again, we've got shadow texture and everything, so we go with that one. I kind of like this because there's a different mix of colors going on here. It's a bit overexposed, so let me just tweak that. Okay, so we mark that five star. Yeah, I like this as well. I like weird things. 
I like it when there's different contrasting colors or you've got nice textures and it mightn't be the most attractive of shots uh, but I kind of like it as a grunginess to it that kind of works okay so moving on okay we have this building I talked about this in the video as well um, and one of the things I didn't quite mention and I didn't really realize till I was taking it was as I was taking it later on in the sequence I ended up with this cool shot here where you've got the bird in the window um, and I think this is the best one so I'm actually gonna crop on in this um, which I'll get back to in a minute but you can see that worked really well um, it's a bit messy at the minute but I will fix that and just a different version of that but I prefer this first one I think that's pretty cool Okay, so a few more here again. I was liking the light in this shot. So we have a few versions of this. So again, this is kind of a cool little thing going on here. It's slightly overexposed as well. So I just drop that down, increase the contrast. Yeah, use a few more different shots. These are kind of all just. I was trying to catch these birds as they were going over, which was tricky enough. But I did actually manage to get a shot of them which is this shot, which I actually think works really well. So we like that, we get that five stars. And then, yeah, that one's not as good. Okay, obligatory seagull shot. No, we don't want that. Uh, I like this, actually. Uh, I'm gonna do something nice with that. Okay, so moving on. Um, this shot didn't work the way I wanted it to because I just wasn't quick enough. Um, it was going to be really cool because we had the orange guy wearing the orange hoodie uh, and the orange sign here but I wasn't quick enough if I had got him just a few seconds earlier he was kind of turned towards me and um, but by the time I got the camera up and everything focused and everything it just didn't work which is a pity because it could have been a cool shot this shot's cool I like this one uh, this one's okay it's not great though because this guy's out of focus This is a cool shot. We've got the two ladies here. And again, we've got some kind of symmetry going on between what she's wearing and the background here. And then you're kind of picking up different colors. Uh, the composition's a bit messy because I was walking and everybody else is walking. So you've got this fluid situation. Um, but we'll tidy that up in a minute. Um, I think it's just going to skip through some of these because we don't want to be here all day. So again, this I like this shot as well. This shot's kind of cool as well. Uh, you've just got the bottle in focus here and then everything else is kind of around it. So we're kind of focusing on this. I think that kind of makes a shot. This is a cool shot because we just had this little strip of light falling down here between the two canopies and it kind of works really well. Bring that up a bit. Again, I'm going to go back to all these and fix them properly. Like I said, I just sometimes like to have a quick, a quick look at your sh image when you're taking it just to see how well it turned out. Um, or if you know how it might look like with a little, few little tweaks um, but yeah. so again this is a cool shot as well again we have patterns of light falling here which make it work really well we've got some great expressions going here you're like the expression of this guy um, yeah I think this is a cool shot so again it's slightly overexposed so that's easily fixed uh, grab the contrast of it this guy's face is just just this little tiny patch of light and it's very reflecting from the buildings on the other side of the street and so that's kind of ruining that but we can fix that and we'll go back to that in a minute uh, so again i'm just going to pick a few more of these here this shot's cool i like this shot i like this shot this is a cool shot uh, this shot's cool but again it's out of focus so we won't mark that. Uh, this is not bad. It's slightly out of focus, but it's okay. I think we got away with it. Okay, so then there's this guy, which I, you, I showed in the video as well. Um, I was trying to get a, a nice shot, but the microphone was in the way. And there was people all to this side. You can't see behind me, so I couldn't really get in front of them. Well, I could, but that would be just rude. But then, just at the last minute, he kind of leaned over, and I thought, hey, that's a great shot. So, again, it's all about the expressions. So, and then another sequence here, we had these guys waiting here. Uh, I presume there were buskers waiting to perform. And again, if 
a few different shots and then we get this this cool shot at the end so again it just needs just a little bit of tweaking to bring up some of the like I can bring up this guy's face and a few other things which I'll go to in a minute um, this shot's great because you've got this wonderful expression here and this really kind of interesting looking character so I'll let that shot okay so a few more um, this is just walking along and uh, I like taking shots because sometimes you catch interesting expressions I kind of like this shot there's, there's a bit of motion in it but yeah let's see what we can do with that that's a cool shot too again great expression we're on to the GH2 stuff here now so again I like that shot I like this guy selling stuff again cool expression cool character I like the headphones okay so we like that and this is a cool shot and this is cool too, you got the expression of these two guys uh, I think they're taxi drivers waiting again I like catching people in mid expression this is kind of interesting let's see what we can do with that and yeah that's not great it's about overexposed but that's not really the issue I think it's more because there's, there's a bit too much movement in it yeah it's too much camera shake okay so now that I've gone through everything and uh, done my selects um, I'm gonna go back over here and we already have a five star album so if I click on that um, I'm getting all my five star images um, like I said it's on the other screen so you can't see it but I shall just bring it in for a second so you can see it so these are all the images that I marked as five star and um, I'm gonna pick a few of these now and I'll just go through and process them and show you what I've done or what I can do <laughs> okay so let me just put that back on the other screen so, first of all, let's have a look at this one. Okay, so like I said, I like the kind of light and texture falling on here. When you've got the patterns of light going on, it's, it creates a very interesting effect. Uh, however, because there's quite a bit of keystone going on, um, I was looking up at it. Uh, it's it's not great. and We want to get some rid of some of that stuff. And also, I'm going to darken down the shadows, so... I'm going to be bouncing around a bit. I'll try and explain as I'm going, but uh, every now and again you'll just kind of have to wing it. So I'm using the color editor here to decrease my blacks a bit, so I'll bring them right down and create a nice shadow. So the next thing I want to try and do is I'm going to use the keystone corrector on this just so to straighten everything up, um, which is this tool up here. And I want keystone vertical. So what this does is gives you two little lines uh, which is probably hard to see on this so you use this to basically select what should be vertical so I want to kind of keep it as close to the edge as possible okay so I'm gonna go with that and hit apply okay so that straightens everything up and then if I go back to the hand tool up here that'll show the crop and there we go so immediately that's much better uh, yeah I like that that's pretty cool maybe I get a little bit of vignette just to increase it a bit more just a little bit of clarity right, exposure just this vision uh, yeah I'm happy with that I like that shot now okay so this shot uh, again lots of texture going on here try some curves on this I'm kind of winging this so I have actually processed some of these already before in another project just so I kind of had an idea of what I was doing and wasn't going into this completely blind but I'm still kind of winging it in some of these I like that uh, let's see I could bring no oh, that actually works uh, yeah that's pretty cool let's try some clarity as well I don't want to over process the images here either so I'm just kind of I'm trying to pick and just make sure that's not going too bad yeah no, that's all holding up for a little okay so this guy I'm going to try classic chrome on him so um, if you're wondering how I did this that's actually in my other videos um, on this so uh, if you look at that video, if you'll, you'll find it on my channel. Um, yeah, it's kind of a dark image, so 
I think the classic chrome works on this. And I'm just going to warm it up a bit, just a little bit, and uh, crop in slightly as well. I know some people have an issue with cropping pictures. Uh, if you do, that's fair enough. I don't, so I'm going to crop it. It is better. And maybe just a little bit of vignette as well, just to focus the attention in. A bit of clarity. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so again, we've got the bright lights going on here, and I think this will make an interesting kind of abstract image. So again, the first thing I want to do is straighten this. So I'm going to use the keystone tool again. Uh, and this time we're going to use keystone vertical. I really like the keystone tool in this. It's actually, it's really simple to use. Uh, you've got something similar in Lightroom. Um, with the guided upright. Um, and that's the automatic upright, but that doesn't always work. Um, but this, yeah, this is pretty cool. I like this. Okay, so we've got that straight away. Get back to this. Um, for this, I'm going to try one of my own styles from my Silverlux styles. So I'm going to use styles, Silverlux. And let's see which one works. I imagine burnt plastic might be too much. Uh, actually, I thought black ink should have worked. That might be a bit strong. Let's just go down through these. Mm, that's kind of dramatic. Let's go with that. We'll go with that, and I'm going to tweak it a bit. So, uh, I don't need so much of a vignette on it. And maybe uh, we'll bring the exposure up slightly. But yeah, that works. That's kind of a nice dramatic image now. Okay, next. So, in this case, I think, I'm not sure this is perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal. I'm going to just try and see if this needs to be straightened and I'm going to use the ruler tool. So i just drag this across here. I don't think it actually needs much. Now, you might think that's probably not worth the effort. Uh, sometimes when you've got shots with very strong shapes in it like this, um, even if it's ever so slightly off, it can actually make a big difference. Um, again, this is probably just the graphic designer and me talking. But yeah, I find that sometimes it needs just, just a tiny bit. Because when you've got perfectly straight lines, you get this very strong graphic look to an image which can actually make a big difference. So I'm just going to tweak a few values here. I'm not going to do much to this because it doesn't really need much. Um, I might actually warm this up slightly because while well, you've got the warm sunlight at the back, this is quite blue. So I'll just give it a tiny bit because it doesn't need much. And again, maybe just a little bit of vignetting just to focus the attention. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these. Actually. Yeah. I'm not going to do these now. I'll go back and do these again at some point in the future. This shot I like. Uh, so what I want to do here is I want to try and emphasize the orange and bring this up slightly and then kind of maybe bring down the blues so for that I'm going to use let me just increase the contrast first I'm sorry if my thoughts get a bit scattered here while I'm talking that's not anything new because even just that is quite cool but I'm going to show you one of the one of the interesting little things you can do in capture one or at least I'm going to try to so I'm going to go over here to the color editor and I'm going to go to advanced and select this tool. So what I want to do is I'm going to select the blues first. So I'm going to drag over all that. Okay. And then if I go up here and I'm going to go create mask layer from selection. So this just takes a minute. Okay. So what that's going to do is that's going to create a new layer uh, with just that area selected. So I'll go show you what I'm going to do with that in a second. But before I do that, I'm just going to create another one for the oranges. So again, this is not a huge 
range. I can expand this out ever so slightly. And again, I'm going to create another layer for this. This might be an excessive amount of things to be done to the image, but it's more just to show you what you can do. Okay, so the first one here will be my blue layer. So I can bring down just the blues. See, I'm now just adjusting the blues. And I can increase the contrast. I could decrease the saturation there, but no, I want to bring it up. Because again, I want to create a contrast between the two. So maybe, yeah, that works. Okay, so then on my second layer, which should be the oranges, so I can bring that up and increase the saturation on that, increase the contrast a bit. So yeah, so if I turn both of these off, that gives it an interesting kind of effect. And that might be slightly over the top, so I'm going to go back to the main area and I'm just going to decrease the overall contrast just slightly. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That'll do. Okay, so next, let me just pick a few more of these. Some of these don't need much. Um, this shot's cool. I like this shot. So I'm just going to increase the contrast slightly. And it's a bit cool, so I'm going to warm it up. Yeah, that works. And what I might do is just maybe bring up the reds a bit. yet to focus the attention in and a little bit of clarity hey there we go so that's kind of cool um, yeah we had this shot uh, that I said needs a little bit of fixing so first things first and again I'm gonna warm it up a bit it's a bit cold maybe just increase the contrast and we need to crop this in so that there's a bit of balance going on so if we bring this in, what I'm going to try and trying to aim for here is just there's a degree of symmetry between the first guy and the last guy. So there's roughly the same distance between both of them at the edge of the frame. So something like this, and I'll just bring this up slightly, just so it's more balanced. Let's see what that looks like. Yep, that looks okay to me. Maybe just a little bit of clarity. A bit bright, so I'm going to drop the exposure slightly. I need a bit more clarity. Yeah, I think that works. That's pretty cool. I like that. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, I'm going to skip through some of these. That's actually fine. Don't need to do anything to that. Again, that's pretty cool. Uh, it's just a few slight tweaks. Again, don't really need much. So this is cool. Yep, like that. Uh, okay, this shot. What I want to do here is again is bring down the darks so that we, we emphasize the shadows uh, from the trees that are falling on it. So again, I'm going to use the color balance tool. If you use this slider in the color balance tool, it's great for adjusting the blacks. So again, we don't want to go too far. I can bring that down and then I can go back over here and just use the shadow slider, a bit like that. And a bit of a vignette. Uh, that's maybe too much. Let's bring the contrast back up slightly. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, this guy is slightly too bright again. Uh, that contrast. Um, we can try black and white on this. Um, although I don't think it needs it. But let's just have a quick look again. I'm going to use one of my silver looks. Oh, no, not that one. Yeah, that kind of works. Um, overcast is another good one. Oh, that's too bright. Rubber tree? Oh, yeah, that works. Yeah, that kind of works. I like that. We'll go with that. Okay, so I can just skip through some of these. And this shot needs just a bit of fixing here because that's a bit overexposed, so I can just drag up the highlights. Oh, don't want to go too far. You just want to keep an eye on the histogram when you're doing this. 
There's clipping warnings here as well, but um, I'm not going to use them for this. I'll just increase the contrast slightly. Maybe a tiny bit of a vignette and some clarity. Hey, and there we go. Uh, again, contrast. Expose your down slightly. A little bit of vignette, a little bit of clarity. Yeah, so again, that doesn't need much. The shot again. i just tweak that. What I'm actually going to try here is this might work well with Velvia because we've got strong colours here, so. You know what? That velvet is too strong. I'm gonna put that back to Provia. Mm, that's better. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna take down. Uh, doesn't need too much. Or is that better? shot. Ah, now this is the one I wanted to talk about. So, like I said earlier, you've got the bird in the window here. Uh, everything's a bit crooked, so I want to straighten that up. So again, I'm going to use the keystone correction tool, but again, I'm, this time I'm going to use the third one, which is keystone everything. So, ideally you want to keep this to the edge of the frame, but because there's no real straight vertical lines here that I can work off, I'm actually going to use it on the edge of the window. So, I, this might take a few goes to get right. Let's bring that in. And bring that in. I know some people probably have an issue with doing this kind of amount of work to an image. But, for me it's always the finished product that matters, so I don't actually mind it. I see now, I forgot to hit apply there. So apply. Okay, that's not exactly correct, so I need to just tweak that slightly. But, you know, that's way off. I got to need to zoom in a bit. Looks a bit better. Let's zoom back in. Okay, that's much better. Okay, so now we have everything reasonably straight. Um, mm, there's one other thing going on here. You've got this kind of purple fringing going on. That's because I had the lens a bit too far open. So we use the purple fringing. I should get rid of most of it. Yeah, that's all back on. Okay, now let's see what we can do with this. Again, what I want to try and do is just darken down the black so that you're bringing up the contrast and seeing everything that's going on. Cause yeah, see that makes a big difference, even just that. Um, I'm actually going to crop that in so that everything is even. This actually is one of those times when you, you do want to put things in the center because you've got a degree of... It's about symmetry at this point. Or I could go with something like this later, which would also work, but I'm going to... Well, actually, let me just see. Center it horizontally and then maybe work on the third lines. But then I don't want the hedge in the bottom. So, yeah, no, we're just going to center it. You know they say in composition that you shouldn't be centering things. Well, sometimes when you have a strong graphic image, centering actually works. There, so in this case, I think that actually works. What ideally I would do is get rid of that. Um, I could take that into Photoshop and do it, but I'm not going to do that now. Let me just check that a bit. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, um, I'm going to skip forward a few. 
This image is pretty cool. This just needs a bit of contrast. Maybe the exposure slightly. Again, this is overexposed, so bring that down slightly. That's that kind of dramatic light going on, so yeah, that works for me. Just that. Oh, that's too much. Okay. Okay, these shots. Um, they don't need much. Again, I, I kind of like it when there's deep shadows and things. I know some people like to try and even everything out so that's your third taking away the shadows like I don't like that I think y when you've got this kind of patterns of light going on you should embrace it and I think that works it just kind of adds the light itself as kind of a character in the scene almost so yeah I like that we'll go with that uh, again this shot again it's slightly too bright so I'm just going to bring that down the contrast of it. Again, the cropping is bad on this because, like I said, everything was moving. It was one of those fluid scenes, so I'm going to bring it in. I want to keep it to the edge here. I'm just going to go to the edge of the pole. So we've got people moving in and out of frame, and that acts as a frame for the these two people in the center, which are the main subject of it. So. That works. Again, a bit of vignette, a little bit of clarity. It's still ever so slightly overexposed. Okay, that works. We go with that. Okay, this shot. You see, there's quite a lot of burnt out going on here, so I can bring it up again. Bring up the shadow slightly. Actually, the contrast is not great in this scene. Um, yeah, I'm not overly happy with that shot when I think about it. I'm just going to leave it for the moment. Okay, so this shot doesn't need much contrast. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, this shot. Now, again, I can crop in on this. I need to get rid of all this. But if I bring the highlights down... Well... I thought it would affect the center of it, but it's actually fine. Oh, actually, okay. I could crop in on this a bit, but uh, let me just see what happens. Even just a vignette actually works. Yeah, no, that works quite well. So you've got the light falling here. and Again, like I said, the light itself is almost a subject on this shot, so... Yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's go with that. Okay, and next shot. Okay, so again, this is a tricky one. Uh, Bring down the highlights. Yeah, that solves it, but I'm kind of losing some of that. Let me just bring the blacks down slightly. Okay, and again, a little bit of a vignette I think will help Big Dale here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, I like that. Okay, so I'm just going to do a few more now because this is. I don't even know how long I'm recording for at this point. Okay, so again, ever so slightly overexposed. If you actually look at the shot, the exposure is actually probably even throughout it because there's such areas of shadow and highlight, but unfortunately the highlights are slightly overexposed, at least for my taste. Again, I don't mind the dark shadows, so I kind of like to embrace that. It adds an extra depth to it. And again, it's like the light itself becomes part of the scene, but you don't want to get too dark either. Sometimes it helps to bring down the black levels, but actually increase the shadows. Even if it's just a little bit. Okay, that kind of works. So we'll give it a bit of a net, just to... And a bit of clarity. Yep, that works fine. Um, this shot, this actually doesn't need much. Mm. Bit of contrast, shadow. Okay, so the problem here is the guy's face is in shadow, so it's kind of ruining it. Uh, so I can try and paint them in. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in for this, just so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, let me just paint a bit on here. Okay, that's probably... 
It only needs a tiny bit, just to, so that you can see that he has a face. The only thing you need to be careful of here is that you end up with too much of a glow around the edges. Um, I should have been better at masking this, but yeah, we'll do with this later. Maybe just a little bit of his jacket as well. Yeah, that works. We got this. That's fine for now. Um, okay, so I'm just going to pick a few more shots here. Um, there's this one. Again, does it? Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. Doesn't need much. Just a little down the highlights. There's quite harsh light going on here, so. But you can see. The dynamic range of the Export 2 is so good, it's able to pick out most of that and still not lose anything. Um, this is one of those times again I'm going to crush the blacks quite a lot and then I will bring back just a smidge. Yeah, so you see what that does is create contrast even in the dark areas, otherwise that all becomes quite flat, but if you bring the blacks down it works. And maybe just a bit of a vignette. Okay, we're nearly there. I'm just going to do maybe two, three more. So this shot. Again, slightly too bright on the faces. Increase the contrast. Bring that down just a bit. And a little bit of shadows. Again, I don't want to do too much here because you end up with the same problem. But let's try doing our little trick here again. So we bring up the shadows and then we'll go over and we'll bring down the blacks. See, that kind of works. Yeah, that works. Now, the only problem is we got this guy's face is completely black. So let's add a layer and uh, auto mask is on. Okay, let's go to zoom in. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Undo that. The auto mask on this is quite flaky. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just because of the file type. Okay, so I just erase the edge of that. Okay, so let's bring that up. Yeah, so that's all we needed to do. And just raise the edges of that. See, the auto mask is working there, and then it's not working. Yeah, that's good enough. And some back edge. Yeah, no, that works. Because if you see, if we turn this off, you can see it's way too dark. But that actually works. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do to this is I'm just going to crop this ever so slightly so that it's a bit more even. I don't want to go too much because I don't want to lose it in the top and bottom. That works. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna do one of the. I'm going to do one of the GH2 images. Um, you can see the difference. <laughs> it's an old camera, so it's not quite got what the Fuji's got. However, it just needs a bit of tweaking. Um, I find these are actually not. Uh, profile particularly well in um, well any software the software that handled the, the GH2 the best was Aperture um, but we're no longer using that uh, I have had issues with it in Lightroom as well so I'm just going to tweak this for a bit so don't mind what I'm doing it's probably not going to be the best I could just make this black and white but then I'm going to lose the green up here let me bring that green up Yeah, 
we're getting there. This isn't bad. Let me just... That's pretty okay. I'm not kind of happy with that. Okay. Now, I gotta cheat a bit here, so I'm gonna copy those settings by going Command Shift C. And then I shall see what happens if I apply them to this image. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, it's a bit cool, so let's just warm that up slightly. Yeah, that's much better. Um, actually, you don't need that. Let's try these guys. That's pretty cool. That's a bit dark, so let's bring up brightness again. You see, the problem here is the white balance is not good on this. And this can be quite tricky to fix. I think it's too purple, so I'm put more green into it. And bring up the red a bit more. Yeah, it's not too bad. Also, I don't know what's going on over here. Actually, let me just try. Let's see what this looks like in black and white. Okay, that's too strong. Uh, one of my softer ones, so... Yeah, that's kind of dramatic. A little harsh, so let's decrease the contrast. Yeah, that works. That'll do. Okay, let me just pick one more. I guess this shot this is a great shot. I guess you don't need to do much to this. I'm just gonna increase the contrast slightly. Uh, let's maybe do our little black crushing trick. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, there's a few more shots there and I could probably spend a bit more time going through them all, but yeah, I think that works pretty well. Um, if I was to export these now, what I would do is uh, I would select the ones I want and go over here to my recipes. So I have this one here called JPEG for web. So that's set to use my um, the settings that I normally use for when I'm exporting to the web. So I like to keep it 2400 pixels. Uh, you might think that's a bit much, but if you're, my website is 1200 pixels wide and I want it to be retina compatible, so that's double that, so you get 2400. But I keep the JPEG quite low, so it seems to work. Some people like to have it at 1500, um, but I usually go with this. Maybe I'm overdoing it, I don't know. Um, I can also change the naming and everything. And what I would do then is I would just select the images I want and hit process. And what it'll do is it'll output them. Um, if you're using Capture One as well, is you can export multiple formats at once. So you can have loads of recipes and export them all at the one time. So once you just turn them on, uh, like that, and hit process, it will do all of those different formats. But we don't need to do that. So I've actually, here's some I made earlier. So yeah, here's some of the ones I processed earlier when I was playing around. So yeah, I did a few different looks on some of these. But yeah, you get the idea. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this two-part series. Uh, like I said, the first one was a bit of an experiment. I think it went okay. Um, I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, and I seem to have got good comments from it. So um, the second part, I showed you what I did with the images afterwards. Uh, I didn't go through everything, like I said. Um, but yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this. And if you'd like to see more, um, just let me know in the comments and um, subscribe to my channel. And uh, I'll be back with another video soon. Okay, so thank you very much everybody for watching and I'll talk to you soon.